Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dustin Kirch. I got my partner here, Ben Dreiser. Amazing show today. Just got to talk with Tim uh, before hitting the record button here. And I've heard him on a couple other podcasts, and he just seems like a cool dude, someone that we definitely need to reach out with and just kind of hang and vibe and uh, and get his experience in the mobile park world. He comes from uh, the uh, medical field, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And so he's transitioned into the mobile home park investing. He did some other type of real estate prior to that and even during it. And uh, so we want to bring Tim Woodbridge on and share his experience. I'm very excited because he's got all kinds of different uh, cool uh, things that he does and, and let him talk about what he does. Welcome, Tim. I appreciate you coming on to the show. Thanks, Dustin and Ben, man. I appreciate you guys having me on the show. Well, the show, you got that cool vibe, uh, you know, it's Southern uh, California vibe. <laughs> yeah. We were just talking about that Southern California vibe. Represent. Uh, yep. Yeah, More yeah. of a lifestyle, right? You got to, uh, enjoy life as you move along and, and, and hit your goals and make money. And it's not all about that. Sometimes it's more about experiencing, uh, what life is bringing to you at that moment. So that's pretty cool that, uh, you, you enjoy that too. So Tim, um, I know on the podcast, I know a little bit more about you, but tell us for those who are listening on our podcast, a, a little bit about yourself and how you got started. Sure. Um, yeah, dude. Thanks again for having me on. Um, you know, I'm from Southern California. Left when I was 19, all over Arizona. Got my bachelor's of science in nursing. I was a nurse for um, nine years or so. Moved to Charleston, South Carolina six years ago. Didn't know anything about real estate. You know, got in red, rich dad, poor dad, like everyone else does. <laughs> yep. And was like blown away by the words asset and liability because they were both new words to me at the time. And yeah, just like, okay, you know, it's opening the veil or like look, peeking behind the veil, like, oh, this is how they do it. Or uh, like, this is how people are getting wealthy, you know? <laughs> and so just research, research while I was a nurse, did more reading, listened to Bigger Pockets. And yep. Frank Rolf was on it with uh, Brandon Turner. And, nice. you know, I was trying to figure out what like exactly I wanted to do. And he was, Frank was talking about those parks and or about park investing and i was like mm -hmm. yeah i want to do that and so i just kind of jumped in man head first so nice and you are at nine or ten parks right now ten i just closed ten wow and and how many years has this been four four december 7th 2019 is when we closed wow that is that's congrats that's awesome thanks yeah dude. I think you downplay it a lot for somebody that's like, yeah, I'm just chill. I'm just here to smell the roses. 10 parks in four years is incredible. So that's, that's nothing to like even downplay. You're, you're a ball in the space. So, <laughs> I mean, I, so it, it's fun. It's, uh, it was one park. And then my second was two years later. My okay. third was a year later after that. And then this year I've closed seven. So wow. it's been a great year. It's been a great year. And I'm like, okay, now I know how to do this. Now I know how to close these. Now I know, you know, it's like getting my, my footing. That first park, I, I was like proving the concept of it mm -hmm. and like, uh, you know, figuring out how to do it. And yeah, you know, once like this year, I just hit the ground running, man. And uh, it's been a good year. So what was it that made you feel more comfortable to start really heavy into the acquisitions? I know you mentioned you got the proof of concept, but what was it that you felt like you needed to learn to get to that next level? So I started, I partnered up, like got a group of, of people. So like mm -hmm. right now I have three core partners, right? Okay. And like before then I was always like, like I have, I'm part of a deal, but with different people. So like. Uh, just, you know, working with the same guys and figuring out, you know, who's good at what and who can do what, like, it gave me more confidence, you know, because mm -hmm. no, I don't know, like, exactly what I'm going to do. And like, I still don't, and, you know, but we, we have an idea of how we'll, we'll take a deal, you know, there's different options to do it. But I think just working with others has really enabled me to have more confidence It's like, oh, it's not all on my shoulders, like, I don't know. I know a little bit, but 
my partner knows a little bit in a different way and my other partner knows a little in a different way. So, yeah. I, I love that. And that's one of the things I talk to a lot about uh, with new investors or people getting into real estate. Like I've been in for 18 years, so I get a lot of people reach out to me about getting into it. And I say, it's all about the who, not how, right? You probably have heard of that book yeah. and you did exactly that. And we're doing that in this phase of our, our careers in Mobile Park and RV Park space is we're trying to connect with people that are ahead of us. And those are the people that we want to learn from. We want to JV with them. We want, even if it's taking a, a lower cut on the equity side, it's, it doesn't matter because we want, we're in a learning phase and we're in that mindset of, we want to keep people like you and others that have that experience to mitigate the risk of just trying to go out there and do it ourselves. And I feel like when you get into the commercials, it's a lot more of a, uh, of a, or a risk if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a so, team sport, right? Yep. Um, we should take a deal down by the way. Let's, let's uh, do that. Yeah. Um, can you, can you go. through that first deal and how, like how you prospect for it, how you analyzed it, how it kind of came to pass and kind of like walk us through it and kind of the learning lessons through deal number one and how you got your feet wet. Uh, so I, you know, I listened to that mobile home or the, sorry, the big pockets podcast with Frank and, and Frank said, you know, check out mobile home park And I mm -hmm. said, okay. And I found, <laughs> you know, uh, look through, there is a park that had been on the market for a while. Uh, that was like an hour 15 from where I live in Charleston, South Carolina. And I was like, hey, like, let's, let's take this down. And <clears throat> I mean, I can say that now, like I went in confident. I didn't, I had zero confidence, zero. There was nothing like, I was like, holy shit, this is so scary. I don't know what to do, but here's this guy's number. And so I called the number and I got a voicemail. And I, so I texted and it was like, hey, I'm so sorry if I got the wrong number. My name's Tim. I'm interested in, in this park. See if you're still interested in selling. And, you know, I had a little bit of confidence because I, at this time, you know, I was, being a, a, a local in-person meetup. So I was Maria. a nurse, yep. right? I, yeah. yeah, I was a nurse. I worked Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. So three twelves, but that was mm. the same schedule. The RIA was on Tuesday morning every week. So I was just sitting around pe with people learning like how they did things. Nice. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, I called this guy uh, or left a message sent, or sent the text. He called me back and like the whole time I'm nervous, but it was a good conversation. You know, I, I just yeah. talked to him like a person. He, and why are you selling? Oh, he said, he's a retired pharmacist. I said, oh, I'm a nurse. Okay. There's a little bit of rapport building. Mm -hmm. And uh, why are you selling? Oh, well, you know, my, my daughter is a doctor. She lives in Chicago and with her husband and, you know, they just had a, a baby. So I want to go spend more time with my grandbaby. And so I said, okay, okay. And, uh, so he, you know, everything was laid out on mobilehomeparkstore.com. It was, he's mom and pop seller, right? So it's not like there's a professional P and, uh, profit and loss, P&L, mm -hmm. but it was enough info to do like Frank's calculation of okay, 10 to 36 lots occupied, 125 lot rent each, and just do, you know, rough calculations. Um, so he wanted way higher than what, Frank's calculation came out to me, but I went and I made that offer. You know, yeah. I said, I'm so sorry. This is way lower, but like this, this is my reason why I'm offering this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he said like, at this point I made the offer in person. So he said, come on up, I'll show you the park. And so I went and this is like small town, South Carolina. I'm from Southern California. It's, it's all scary to me. Right. So it's all <laughs> nervous about everything but i'm i'm like okay i'm gonna go do this so i drive up by myself and uh, you know i meet him and his brother and like i'm five six they're both like six two so like they're older <laughs> guys but i'm like oh man like this is crazy um but they're super nice and uh, you know they show me around the park and then i um, i go to lunch with the seller it's just me and him and i get out like my paperwork this this is why, this is why I'm only able to offer this. I'm so sorry, but this is a number. And he said, no, he said, I can't do that. And I said, okay. And then he said, I can't go anything less than this. And I said, okay, if I give you that, will you sell it to me for that? I said, yeah. I, and I, 
I said, will you for me? And I, the only reason I said, will you finance it for me is because I was hanging out with old Southern guys who did real estate creatively. That's yeah. it. I wouldn't have known otherwise, you know, but so it was like every time in this RIA, every time someone brought up a deal, it's like, do you need all cash Close, sort of like, let's get creative. <laughs> And so, you know, I, and he said, no, but I'll finance a little bit. Um, and so, yeah, man, I mean, it was really hard to get a bank loan because it was 10 or 36 occupied. He ended up hooking me up with a friend of his who he went to school, who was a vice president of a local bank. Okay. And then, uh, he carried, uh, um, right. Yeah. Okay. So 70, 10, and then. 10 or 15%. I don't remember exactly. But anyway, <laughs> so, you know, we had to bring substantially less. And yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I was a nurse. I had a good job, but I was stupid money wise. So I had almost nothing saved. So mm -hmm. I reached out to a friend from the local RIA and uh, he brought in the down payment. I brought in closing costs and we got it, you know, we closed it. And I nice. said, that's amazing. Uh, but I have no idea what to do next. So I, <laughs> I had to figure it out. <laughs> so how many pads was that? 36. So 36. And okay. occupied a 36. Yeah. What it was, how many occupied? 10. 10 were occupied out of 36. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And owned or tenant owned? Tenant owned. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that that's interesting. That's a heavy uh, on your first park. Did you, when you purchased it, was it a valued based on it being occupied with 10 or was it on some kind of pro forma number like most sellers I, want? Uh, so if you go off of Frank's, you know, formula, I overpaid. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, especially at that time, uh, <laughs> was not smart enough to like, okay, let's extrapolate in like five years. This is what it's going to be worth. No, that took me some like time and just messing around with numbers to be able yeah. to do something like that. No, I was just like, I have no idea. I want to close this and like figure it out. I don't know exactly what I need to do, but I know I need to get this filled. I don't know how, but I know that there's all these vacant spots yep. that, and I just need to fill it and let's just close it, figure it out. Nice. So when you bought it though, with the 10, was it cash flowing or was it like a break even? No. It's break even, <laughs> yeah, barely break even. I mean, so we closed, I had a $15,000 capital line from the bank that we just opened the uh, operating account in. Okay. And uh, like, like right away, there was a sewer issue. So it was like, like $8,000 spend of that 15. And then like, long story short, we, we used to have a third partner, but he like stole from us. So like a lot of that money was taken too. So it's just like, mm. it was crazy talk, but it was. If there was no exit, it was breaking even. So, you know, it was me figuring out how to run a park. If I was smarter, I would have reached out to people who know better. But like, mm -hmm. sometimes I'm stubborn and I, <laughs> I do it myself and just like everything, you know, I ran it and everything that I would get annoyed at, I eventually realized I should have someone else be doing this. But not right away, dude. I did yeah. everything, including bookkeeping for at least the first year and a half, I think. So okay. Not more. Yeah. Eventually I got a bookkeeper and it was like life game changer. changer. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I I hate numbers and doing all that stuff. I hate it. Like even now with my my properties, I just, I just copy it in a picture and send it to my accountant and the CPA and that's it. Like I don't want even my and I don't even know what, how the taxes are being done. I just do what my CPA tells me and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, so what's cool. I got a, a bookkeeper on Upwork and, you know, ask like, how, how do you hire? And like in the past, it's just been, it's been haphazard, but I got super lucky with my bookkeeper. He's just the only one I've had in the same one. And every park I get, I just hire him through that new company to do the books. But, you know, he's, he's in Bangladesh. He's amazing. Nice. And, you know, I give him read only access to my, my, you know, and whatnot mm -hmm. and he goes through all and he's he's oh my gosh he's better than i am and it has taken <laughs> so much stress off of me trying to do it so like yeah. you know he'll email what was this for and i have to think and then i like okay <laughs> it was for this and then end of year here's your p l's so you can send directly to your bookkeeper so nice so fast forward four years now now to now what's that work look like 
So that park, it's like 92% occupied. Let's see, the first year I brought in, it was 2020 and COVID hit and Legacy is mm. like, we're going to finance these homes to park owners. Yeah. So like 100%. Yeah. Uh, so I got those homes and then two, uh, two organic move-ins, people move in their homes in because okay. like their family lived in that park. Yep. And so I got to 19 and I more than doubled what I paid for, like at the refi. So refied paid the seller everything back because he was still holding that little bit yep. you know paid the old loan put a like a, i don't know 10 or so into mine and my partner's pockets but okay. like every all of our cash was paid back so yeah i mean nice. we're at 19 uh 36 2022 brought in six more legacy homes and then all the lots are individually deeded. So instead of like, so what we got 25 at 36 occupied. Mm -hmm. And then I just uh, sold everything else on like a, a land contract, basically okay. at least with an option to purchase all of the land. So, nice. you know, because I'm like, it, it's a small town and it doesn't make sense to bring these in. Like I, it, it just doesn't make sense. It would make yeah. sense to bring in like a used home for a lot cheaper, but yeah. So how about I just sell this land on, on land contracts and, you know. That's interesting. And so are, is a park on septic, I'm guessing? No, it's no. city, water, city, sewer, bro. Oh, wow. Lucky. That's great. Lucky. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So you you individually deeded one of the parcels and now- uh, They're already, they're already individually deeded. Oh, they were. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. I bought 36 parcels that were run as a mo mobile home park. That's interesting. We we had one in South Carolina that was like that too. It was pretty much, it was 20, I think it was all on the same street, but individual. In um, South Carolina? What yeah. Part? What market was that? Orangeburg. No. Uh, you know? <laughs> I'm just, I, I guess it because it's funny when it's right. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't remember where it's, gosh, why is, this was a couple months back. I can't remember now. Anyways. Yeah. So it was, uh, I'll figure it out and I'll let you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, uh, yeah, it was the same thing. And so with yours, did you make it that you were not responsible for any sewage or water issues or any land issues? How'd you kind of set yours? Up? So, I mean, it was, you know, already the infrastructure was already there and like coming in, we, we were responsible for water and sewer. So it's okay. It's this big chunk, right. Of all these properties. And then water and sewer from the city, it comes up to like right here. And then everything else in here is all our responsibility. So, oh my gosh, so much headache. But, <laughs> you know, we 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 figured out the headaches and figured out how to make it work better for us. A lot in the beginning, which was very scary because I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Um, I leaned on Ryan Groney. I don't know if you guys know him or not, but he's a few years ahead of me in the mobile home park journey. And... Uh, he really helped me with the the first park, you know, helped me. So I wasn't freaking out so much about that sewage <laughs> issue. Jeez. Yeah. Nice. It's, it's always the, uh, what you don't know is the scariest to me. Right. Oh, and yeah. when you're getting to something new, it's, you don't know a lot and there's a lot of things that you just don't know to even ask or think about. So, but it's good. You did do the prank roll thing, right? It's, uh, that's, as I talked to a lot of people and that seems to be where a lot of people have started and he seems to be very, we haven't talked to him, but it seems to be a very nice guy and like very free with his time. Did you actually get to talk with Frank at all? No, I haven't. Not yet. I, yeah. uh, one of these days I will uh, meet him and thank him. I was just at the Jake and Gino conference in Orlando and okay. I met, uh, Oh, not Brandon who, uh, David Green, David Green was oh, there. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Him. I was like, you were pissed. Thank you so much. Like I'd be nowhere without y'all. So yeah, he's a cool guy. I've met him before too. That was actually twice now. Um, randomly I was in Maui and he lives in Maui and I was meeting with some other investors who's friends with Brandon. And so we, we got to have lunch, but super cool dude. I wonder if that's how he got into mobile and parks was because of Frank also when it, once he had him on the show, maybe like, oh, this is what I should be doing. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, that's, you know, I think I tell people, I'm like, oh yeah, I I listen to Brandon Turner to Frank Rolfe and they're like, oh yeah, he's been in it a while. I'm like, I think he got in it at the same time I did. He just, yeah. you know, had been real estate much, much longer than me. So he's killing it. 
So, and, and you've done some other real estate stuff too, outside of mobile home parks, right? I got an apartment. We just closed an RV park. I tried and failed horribly at single family wholesaling last year, dude. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a hustler like that. I'm a slow and steady kind of, kind of person, but like, you know, I, I, uh, I quit nursing and I'm like, man, like I love mobile home parks, but I need more cash flow, mm -hmm. like consistent cash flow coming in. And, you know, I was sold on the idea of wholesaling and I don't like the process, but I love the money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the potential of money. And so like, that's probably why it didn't work because I didn't really get into the process. I was just like focused on, on dollars and yeah, I just spent a ton of money on marketing days and blah, blah, blah. And, Almost, I was like, "What am I doing?" Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. I, I did it a couple of years back, and we're doing three to five deals a month for a couple of years. And uh, my partner, who was local to the market in Oklahoma, had some family things going on, so he was taking off. And I'm like, "I'm done with this. This is or I we never intended to get into it. it just happened because we had so many leads. But mm -hmm. I feel you. It's it's a grind. It's definitely a gym, unless you get to a certain level of uh, deals. And then the fact of just like, I don't know. I mean, we still got to call sellers and do all that stuff, but it just felt just even <laughs> worse than. Yeah. yeah it, so. it was like, like, okay, you got something under contract. You got to keep talking to the seller. And then you forgot to find a buyer. And then you got to keep talking and like walking, holding everyone's hand through the process. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm not the one man. This, this yeah. isn't my thing. So. So uh, you brought up something on your first park that you ended up getting financing through a local bank, which I think a lot of people don't think about going to their like local credit unions because of a, uh, let's get to have a relationship type uh, business and lending opportunities. I'm curious with the, since park One, still utilizing, you know, credit unions or lo local banks, or are you doing more traditional financing or are you still doing uh, seller financing? There's a lot it, all in one. Yeah, yeah. okay, <laughs> well, we'll break it down, right? So the first one is a local bank. Um, I love the guy because I would have never closed it without him, but his terms are terrible. Uh, and, and it's not, they're not terrible. It's just, he has a 15 year AM and that kills me in terms mm. of cash flow. Ouch. But yeah. like, whatever, like when I refied, I didn't go look for another bank. I said, let's, you guys refi for me. They gave me like 53% because we didn't really need more. And I didn't fight. I said, that's perfect. You know, I'll, I'll <laughs> keep low leverage. Second park, there was no debt on it. We did like an equity swap. So I paid a little bit of money to come in and run it. Dirk, all owner finance. The uh, four park portfolio in Georgia was like hard money, uh, creative, the seller carrying a lot. The two parks in portfolio in North Carolina is um, a local bank and a friend brought in the down payment. And then the park I just closed in uh, North Carolina is through Vanderbilt. So that, that's probably the most traditional one. Okay. Um, and it just like a couple of weeks ago closed. So. Which nice. brings you to how, how many pads are you at with that closing? 320, yeah, 320, um, something like that. 325, 328, something. Yeah. Amazing. So, Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks. So average good. of 32, let's just say. Uh, so kind of on the smaller side, then you hear a lot of investors uh, per pad, per park, whatever. Um, what's your thoughts behind that of like, what's your buy box? Are you looking at a certain amount of pads now or are you trying to stay under 50 pads or something? I hate under 50 pads. Oh, I don't hate them. I mean, come on. It's, it's, it's done me really well. The more I do it, the more I'm like, oh yes, it is to do a lot bigger. Um, So like one of my goals for this, for 2024 is to take down four parks that are a hundred or more pads. Awesome. You know, I've never done a hundred pad park. So let's do it, man. I it's the same thing. My whole life is like, I don't know how, but that's, this is kind of the direction I want to go. Um, I don't like going under 40 because it's, it's the same amount of work. Right. Um, yeah. and, and honestly, it's easier to operate bigger than, um, what I will do. Um, and like another one of my goals for this upcoming year is to take down six deals with people newer than me. Uh, and so like have more of a consulting like, guiding role in that. And, you know, nice. like I want someone who's 
all about like, okay, I'm newer, I'm, I can hustle, I'm excited. Like then all around, you know, the 40, 30, 40 pad sort of thing. But like, I have so many hours in a day and I want to take down every deal ever in whatever <laughs> creative, cool way that we can do it. But like my limits, my time. So like, hey, you yeah. know, I want to work with people that I like and I want to, if someone's excited about the, the mobile home park space like I am, then yeah, I want to, you know, work on deals with them. Nice. I love that. So what would be your exact buy box territory, utilities? What would that look like? Um, so, well, I mean, my buy box and my perfect park are, are different, right? So my buy box is like really 40 and above, uh, no wastewater treatment plant, no lagoon, uh, park fine, but I'll try to lease with an option, mm -hmm. uh, like to tenants, but like, yeah, I mean, perfect park, a hundred, a hundred less, uh, all tenant owned homes, city water, city sewer, like, you know, all uh, roads, owned and maintained by the city and they're all like you know <laughs> perfect black top and it's it's just you know. so <clears throat> mom and dad divorced when i was 10 and my mom went and bought a double wide in lake forest california right oh, yeah. and it was yeah. in a park and it's funny you know i graduated from mission viejo and like everyone was rich there and i was not and so like in as a teenager i felt that right but like looking back it's like damn that mobile home park we lived in, that was like, nice. I want to go back and buy that. That's, that was a, like all, you know, city water, city sewer. The, the roads were more than likely maintained by the city. It was all like nice blacktop. Um, I mean, it had a, a, a pool. It had a, a, a clubhouse and everything. And I remember just <laughs> being like, oh, how come we have to live here? But like looking back at it, I'm like, man, that's a nice park. That's much nicer than what I have. Yeah. I can't imagine what the space rent is for on those in, in Lake right now. Bro, it's gotta be in a thousand it's, plus. It's gotta be. Yeah. It's gotta be. Yeah. My mom bought the double wide for, I think it was like 25 grand and she paid someone 25, uh, like to fix it up. And so, you know, like my parents divorced, she got money in the divorce. She took that to the home and like, it was a smart thing to do. Yeah. Wow. So uh, I mean, you mentioned you have some partners. So what is your business? Now? What are, what do you do in your business? What do your partners do? And do you have any other staff that is working with you? Sure. So right now I'm partnered with three other guys and they, they live outside of Charlotte. Uh, so let's see, Dave, Dave G, uh, and his brother, Dan are really heavy in CapEx and, you know, the park cleanup, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, my, uh, partner, Tom O'Neill is very, uh, like home centered. So he's looking at like getting a dealer license. He's looking at 21st mortgage and like, you know, getting homes occupied and everything. Mm -hmm. I am on the operation side. So, you know, making sure things run well, we're all kind of like in charge of acquisitions and like creative deal structure and like, you know, kind of mastermind together. How can we best do this? Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, and then the operation side, like I just went to, um, sharper sharper business solutions like yeah with a gary um, yeah yeah some, harper yep, gary yep. and susan yeah yeah good people dude nice um but you know so i went from three parks to 10 parks in in one year that's and awesome yeah it is it is 100 <laughs> i love it and I'm crazy like, too ah, it's crazy <laughs> yeah and i'm like you know the i gotta get my operation side in, in like in order i hired like two more remote virtual assistants, remote team members, right. Mm -hmm. uh, to be like property management assistants. And okay. I, I was like, I don't know exactly what I want, but I know that I need help. And so, you know, they've been working with me and I went to that, uh, the sharper business solution meetup to like, how can I build this business? So it's an actual business. It's not just me. Like being a bad boss and like, I don't know exactly what I want from you guys, but I want this to be easier. So like I am working on setting up that the business side of that. And like, you know, I created a new company, new LLC and everything. So I can have that all under the um, umbrella of yep. the in-house management because, you know, ever since the beginning, I heard 
oh, manage in-house because if you go like with outside property management, that's when bad stuff happens. And I don't have experience, but mm -hmm. I don't have to because I've listened to enough people bigger than me. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, it was always my goal to keep it in-house. And now I'm like, okay, yes, I want to continue keeping it in-house and I want it to run a lot better. So nice. I'm so obsessed with it, getting it, you know, running smoothly. So two, your four other partners, um, and okay. So bookkeeper, then what, bookkeeper, bookkeeper. So, you, so on the ground, <laughs> starting from the ground level to that, what's ground level management? You, do you have an onsite oh, manager for each yes. one? Does like, how's that work? manager for each one? And okay. you know, so we all like, I'm the manager and then I have two assistants. Yep. Um, I'm trying to build the so I can back out more okay. and more on site manager in each park. And yeah, I mean, the more I do it, the more I'm like, like, what's the pain point for me? You know, mm -hmm. that's what I pay attention to because it's the stupid thorn in my, my side. And so from there, it's like, okay, I need to build this out better, or this could be done better. Yep. And it's weird. I don't know, man. It's like a weird obsession that like, I try to calm my brain down with the obsession, but <laughs> it's always like, this should be easier or this could be easier. Yeah. So I geek out on trying to make things as efficient as possible. Um, I think it comes from working with a hedge fund and bringing them from a hundred properties to 5,000 properties in a four year time frame, Damn. and setting up all the operations and, and doing all that. And I love it. And I hate it at the same time. Like Ben and I are going through this right now with our business and trying to create all the SLPs and do all that. And it's like, I felt like it wasn't so hard, you know, eight years ago, but now it's just, I hate it, but I know it needs to be done. So I think on that it's, uh, it's so uh, on-site management, um, how are they being compensated? How have you tested different models with that? What do you like so far? How have um, you found them also? Yeah. I, so whenever I have a new park, I go talk to as many people as I can. So okay. I don't have anything scientific and, <laughs> but I, I'm working on it, you know, I'm working on, you know, right seat and whatever, but like, I just, whoever I get a good like vibe who I'm like, I think you would be good at it. So I've had more failures than I've had successes, right? My one success is my manager at my third park is she, okay. She's like uh, mid forties and she has no experience in anything, but she's been in the park since the nineties. And I said, you know, everyone here, what do you think about, you know, becoming manager? We'll give you free rent. And that's what I do. I do free lot rent okay. in the future, but like, that's, that's what I do right now. Um, and she's like, well, I have no idea what to do. And I'm like, well, I I'll, I'll show you it's, you know, you don't need to know how I'll show you what you need to do. And uh, so <laughs> Okay, so we've had this park for a year and three months, and it's been 100% collections. It's 51 tenants. Wow. So, like, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and so, like, the, what I've learned from using her um, is, like, it's it's not she knew how, it's personality. You know, she's very, very diligent, very, like, follows up with everyone keeps an eye on everything and very much is like, I'm not the boss. I don't know what to do. Like they're the boss. And so it's like, that's perfect, you know? Um, and, and we work great together. She's so good. She's so good. You know? uh, she's like, I'm like, these are the processes and my processes are very right now. So I'm like, yeah, let's, you know, send a payer quit on the sixth hers on the 16th, you know? And, uh, uh, along with, you know, here's Buildium, which I like Buildium. Here's Loom videos. Check it out. She mm -hmm. watched all of them. And then, yeah, she takes the, like the initiative. Oh, it's the 16th. She, I don't have to tell her anything. She went and filed. There was one, there's only been one like eviction that, you know, they, uh, the eviction went through and, but they ended up paying. So I say hundred percent every time, because even yeah. though the eviction went, went through, they still paid. We kept them in the park. It was fine. But uh, yeah, it was uh, like, like she, she took the initiative to go to court. I didn't have to go and drive up to and be in court or anything. I was like, can you do this for me? And she said, yes. And she's like, I'm nervous. I'm like, 
this is what you do. You don't say anything other than what you're asked. Mm -hmm. And then you just ask exact, or you say exactly what they ask. What do you want to do? We want to evict them because they haven't paid. That's it. Yep. So nice. And what, what are your property managers or, and I guess, uh, site managers, what are they required to do? It sounds like also part of the eviction, but in collections, is there anything else out there you want them to do? Okay. So site managers are the most poorly, uh, defined roles in my company right now. So far, it's just been like, Hey, I just need you to be on boots on the ground in case I need anything. And like, what is that shit? What is that? Come on now. <laughs> and I can do better. So it's poorly defined right now. I'm working on defining it better and getting, you know, better roles and different, different things. Uh, you know, I do like my best park man sends me every two weeks video of the park. You know, she drives through video. Love it. So yeah, I mean, I, nice. I need to define the roles a lot better. So it's yeah. definitely, it's definitely on me. It's not on them. You know, I give them what I wanted. I vague ideas about it. So yeah. it's a work in progress, but it's, it's getting better now. What is it, uh, Ben, we just talked to somebody, it might've been guy, um, about you're not supposed to call them site managers or park managers. Oh yeah. He called them. It'll come to me in a second. And it was, and no, it was something and there was a reason behind it. Right. Yeah, he all name, but he he had a very very smart way to reference his park managers that didn't make it seem like park managers, like maybe park ambassador, but I don't think it was park mm. ambassador. But do you um, remember why they they had to go that route? It was something I thought it was a legal issue with calling somebody a park manager. But anyways, that could be an off offline. Well, I know, <laughs> like um, I've heard. You know, because they don't have property management like uh like licenses. South Carolina. Yes. Yeah, you gotta get licensed. Uh, yeah, yeah, that so maybe, maybe was something it. like that, dude. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, yeah, All these little nuances uh within real estate or with any business, right? Just making sure it's being operated correctly. Again, it comes back to what you don't know is what could hurt you basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, as soon as someone's like, Oh, they're they're not a manager, they don't have a property management degree. Well, I'll think up of another name on the fly. Like, come yeah. on, bro. Come on. Yeah. Like, don't, don't. That's so dumb. That's so dumb. But, uh, I mean, it, yeah. What do you think is the area that you need the most help with or work? Like, what are you trying to do better at in your business? Is there something that you're focusing on now? Like a pain point or part so of business? The pain point of the, op like the operation, right? I'm, working on that now so i'm good like after that sharper business solutions you know I, I want gary and susan to write me some kind of like affiliate check for for this but <laughs> kidding kidding obviously they're amazing <laughs> i get nothing from, i'm like you know they're like oh you know you can also do this program like we'll work with you every week but i'm like dude i'm not at that point in my business and they're like we agree with you here's the tools from this two-day event here's the booklet just work through it you know a little like step by step. And so I'm working on that now. And it's it's amazing. It I felt overwhelmed. Okay, this is the path forward. What I do need and what I don't have on my team. Uh, well, I, okay, I take that back. I got a couple, but I could always use more good capital raisers because none of my people, none, none of my current partners are capital raisers. We are working with some friends who are focusing on that not just for us, but like capital raising in general. That's that's my my big, you know, like we try and make all of our deals at least 2X equity multiple in five years for anything that needs capital. But because we're not capital raising heavy, like we've been doing creative, a lot of creative deals where it doesn't really need the um, capital that like mm -hmm. something traditional is. So yeah, man. Nice. We'll do more you... uh, podcasts like this and you'll uh, get that yeah, word exactly. out. exactly. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Are you, do you think you're losing deals because of capital? Because like, okay. So this year I, I have like really focused on like doing just like the things that really move the needle. I'll give a shout out to Brian from Action Academy, which I'm part of. Um, and, you know, by the way, side note, like for anyone new, get in rooms with people doing things that you want to do. So I got Absolutely. a deal room shirt on too. 
a, let's see, a, a Hayden and Jennings need to pay me for all the people I send their way. <laughs> Ryan Lubin needs to pay me for all the people I send his way. It really, it's, it's just like, I speak highly of it because I, for me, you know, the deal room is great for getting around people doing uh, a lot of just traditional multifamily stuff and like figuring out ways to do different things. I know some of the creative ways close because of people in that. Uh, in Action Academy, you know, he's, uh, Brian has had focus on like, what are the things that are moving the needle? So I'm putting out, you know, four LOIs a week and, uh, and then working on my business for like a half hour, an hour, a, like four times a week. And then, you know, a couple other things. Well, my other KPIs, cause it's three, right? If you could only do three things and date night, like work on my relationship and, you know, have the, the big conversations with my fiance. So like my whole life is good, not just my business life. Yep. But anyway, back to the question, is capital an issue for me or am I losing deals because of it? I don't think so. Um, I do like everything I underwrite, I give three offers. So it's all cash at close, which includes like, so if I'm giving all cash at close, I got to raise some capital. And if I got to raise capital, I'm underwriting at least the eight pref, 15 to 20%, 16 to 20% AAR and 2X equity multiple in five years. So that offer has already been made. Mm -hmm. um, and then my two other offers, like I'll give you a little bit more if you can carry some. I'll give you a little bit more if you can carry a little bit more. So like there are, I'm nervous a little bit more so with the full like cash at close because I don't know exactly how I'll get it, but I know that if I'm underwriting for, you know, good returns for investors and I get it, you know, then I, I'm sure I'll be able to raise it. I don't know how, but I'll, I'll partner with some probably. So I'm not, I don't think I'm losing deals. I think maybe if I had. Is it more of like just having the confidence knowing to go after certain projects because you could have those, or you would have the funds available. Is that more of a mindset thing that you're kind of thinking about? No, I, 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 I am fine with taking action without knowing the exact how. Okay. Like, yeah. I was going to say, cause you've done it multiple yeah. times throughout your career. So <laughs> like, I know the fundamentals and I know like, that's why. So when I'm underwriting like the, or when my partner's underwriting, whatever, we're we're working with the assumption that if that cash at close is taken, that it won't be difficult to bring the money in because it has to be so good to give adequate returns to investors. Mm -hmm. You know, the your interests are high. It, investors are expecting a lot of right now. I'm not going to try and send something to, uh, you know, try and raise capital where I'm like, oh, you've got like a four pref and like, <laughs> you're getting a one and a half equity multiple in five years. No, that's bullshit. No one wants that. Yeah. Like I, I know that without even having to, to try and hustle Sunny. So I'm like, those, the D have to be not, they can't be thin. I'm raising capital. Yeah. Nice. Are, you, are you consistent with your four LOIs every week? Has that been something that you've been doing for a while now? Like for a few months, but like this past month, I kind of fell off. Um, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. You know, I'll just get back up on the horse. I, I am kind to myself. A lot of this last month was closing this 10th park and feel, being like, like just overly stressed about it, um, which looking back, I should have been, but whatever. I get overly stressed about things and then I don't do things as, as well as I'd like, but I don't beat myself up for it. No, especially when you now have your 10th park. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Seven park a year, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> started talking about the KPIs. So you said LOIs. What are the KPIs that you track for yourself or for your business that you're looking at consistently? So the LOIs for my business are like, I, that's still a work in progress through the like sharper business solutions and whatnot. The KPIs for myself. So honestly, it's simplified. And Brian, again, Brian Lubin from Action Academy has helped like he, you know, everyone who's in the Action Academy, he's, he gives a super simplified way to like track things. And he is like hardcore in simplify things, you know, and like hardcore in the, if you could only do three things, just do three things. Like people come in, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do this. And I'm including myself too. Right. I wanted to do this, 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 this. And he's like, no, stop. Like, you're not going to get any of it done. And so my 
Okay, so Monday through Thursday, right? Because Friday is a little bit different with uh, team meetings and stuff. So um, send send one LOI or work more on an, an LOI that's already been sent. Um, so like do something in terms of new park acquisitions. Talk to a broker, but like don't just talk to a broker, underwrite a deal, send an LOI, even if it's a wild LOI. Like I've been doing it enough, so I have an idea. You know, I don't know all the little details, but I know, uh, yeah, I could... I could reasonably perform LOI with what I know everything else. So it's 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 pretty good though. It's pretty good. New deal acquisition. The second KPI is work on for like 30 minutes to an hour. It's I say 30, but you know, you start and I just don't stop. <laughs> um on the business. So like work through the the workbook. And then the third KPI, eat well. I got two different exercises. So like Five days a week, arms, abs, shoulders, and then, you know, three days a week, what, chest, back, and legs. And I'm sent, but, you know, I, I keep track of it. Um, and then, yeah, those, um, and with that third one, uh, so there's one day a week and one conversation with my fiance about, you know, how's this relationship? It's the same questions. How's it going? What's working? What's not? Um, so we can, you know, be on the same page and make sure that everything's going well. Um, and then, yeah, Fridays are my like meetings with my team member day. So nice. Like it. Those are the big things. And then there's a million other things that happen in between those. But as long as I get the important stuff done, I feel satisfied. Nice. <laughs> I want to kind of go back to your explosive growth, especially over the last uh, year or so with the seven. What is what is your market? Are you doing out, uh, outreach? Are you doing direct to seller? Like, what's that look like for you guys? Broker outreach mostly. I yeah. like I like talking with brokers because it's like like the third party. You know, we I can talk with them candidly, and mm -hmm. you know, like they want to broker a deal. They want to get a deal sold. So, you know, I, I, and I mean, I've closed deals direct to seller and it's mm -hmm. not like I, I, but like, I need someone to bring it to me. I don't want to, I'm not like a cold call person. I'm not like a, I don't want cold leads. I want warm leads. I want someone interested in making a deal. That's not like sure. Everything's for sale at, at a right price. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I say it like that. I'm the same, I'm the same freaking way. Everything's sale at the right price. Come on now. But uh, yeah, so I like talking with brokers. I like talking with people who are interested to sell. I like, you know, what I really like is when someone brings me a deal and they're like, I have no idea how to do this. It's like, like that, that gets the gears going in my brain. And I'm like, okay, this is a, an interesting problem, you know, mm -hmm. like how, how can we make these numbers work? What kind of weirds you got to do? I love that. Yep. <laughs> nice. So we are approaching... Um, hour and I appreciate your time on here. So people who want to reach out to you, what's the best way of reaching out to you? Just like hit me up, man. Like on Instagram, Tim dot Woodbridge on Facebook. I'm Tim Woodbridge. And then like 20 numbers after it. I don't know. I'll, I'll send it to you guys. <laughs> Put it in the show notes. Yeah, I'm, I'm easy to get a hold of, man. I'm in the deal room. I'm in any mobile home park group. You can see me in uh, uh, Tim Woodbridge. It's, it's easy enough. Um, I'm always down for a conversation. I'm always, now, like I said, my goal for next year, take down six deals with people newer than me so I can, you know, give back and just, we can all get rich together. We can all have, you know, meaningful lives together. Yeah. I did this like relatively solo for a long time. And yes, I had partners, but I was stubborn and I was like, oh, I'll run it all. And I don't like that. You know, I'm yeah. much more satisfied with my life without putting the world on my shoulders. So yeah, real estate's very boring job to have or thing to do because most of the time people are themselves, right? But having partners connecting with other people, like what we're doing with you is what makes it fun. Like I, I'm looking forward to going to Seco, right? Is that what yeah, it's called? Yeah, Seco. yeah, yeah. And, and like seeing you and a couple of other people and just having a blast, right? That's my, what I want to do next year. And that's, you know, we want to have people on the show that we generally like and get along with and do business with. And so uh, we do appreciate you coming on here. Yeah. And we'll include your 
your contact information in the show notes. And by the way, you know, we had an offline conversation before this and uh, Tim is in a band. You play some music called uh, Sleep War, which I'm, I haven't listened to. I was going on and I found him on um, SoundCloud, but I, I don't, that, that was from like five years ago, maybe. So I don't think it's his most recent stuff. So I'm, no. I'm excited <laughs> to go uh, listen to this Sleep War. Uh, already the name of it sounds cool. So it's probably an genre <laughs> of music. <laughs> but uh, I but, like uh, it. It's fun, fun, you know, it's it's just a different way. Uh, I like being multifaceted. I like, you know, I like doing things that I like. That's like, okay. So that's why I enjoy my life that's why i enjoy real estate is i I do stuff that i like if i don't like it i don't do it it's like i i work with people i don't or or i work with people i like and if you're an asshole if you're someone i don't like i don't give a shit how good that deal is i'm not going to work with you so that's 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 the power you know that's like a power play the feel right now it's really good yeah no i i love that because that's the same way that both ben and i think too it's like like it, life, you never know where life's taking you and how short it is. So you got to make the best of it and work with the people that you want to work with and you like generally like, because otherwise, what are you doing? You're just there trying to make another buck and that is no fun. So, so one last question before we go, if you had this all over again, what would you do differently? And what advice would you give to somebody that's getting into this uh, space? Okay. So two things, if I had to, if I could go back in time and tell myself, something to do i'd say stop drinking so much it's a fucking waste of your time um <laughs> and it's like a, a total drain of your creativity of everything like good, right um if i had to tell someone new getting into it i'd say uh do the important things do the things that move the needle you know send the offer even if you don't know how the hell you're going to do it just make a lot of offers and partner up with someone who who is where you want to be. Love it. Yep. I think that's the advice someone could give in this space. It's exactly what I tell people that come to me trying to get into real estate. It's find out who's doing this, connect with them, work with them. Yeah. And focus. You can't have shiny object syndrome because even there's so many things in real estate that you could do. And even inside mobile home park stuff, there's so many different things you could do. So you focus on what moves the needle, like you said, making the offers. That's the biggest thing. Not making offers, you're never going to get a deal. So um, that's awesome advice. I appreciate you doing that. So Tim, again, awesome hanging, man. I appreciate you coming on the show. We look forward to, uh, you know, talking more and connecting and hopefully doing some business together too. Yeah, dude, I'd love that. I really would. And I really appreciate uh, your guys' time letting me come on. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, thanks for... uh, listening to the show. Appreciate everybody here listening. Go show Tim some love, bring him some deals. You know, like he said, he's looking to partner up with newer people coming into, if you got stuff that fits within his buy box, connect with him. Uh, We know we'll be sending him stuff too, that is within his buy box. So we can potentially partner up with. So we appreciate everybody watching us and listening to the show. So 